Pablo, we spoke to you on Monday about your hopes for this conference. What have you seen this week so far? Uh, very bad. Uh, because here they want to have a new mandate to do nothing until 2020. We need uh, deep cuts of emissions now. Every year 350,000 persons die because of climate change. Can you imagine waiting nine years really doing very low emission cuts? Well, more than 350,000 persons died every year, every year. So we need to really put a lot of pressure, not only here in Durban, but also in the capitals of the governments, so that we will see that there will be a real commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions now in a deep form and not just sell a package of a second commitment period that's an empty shell or a, a, a new mandate for a new agreement when we all know that the real thing is how much you're going to reduce inside your own country, not through market mechanisms, you by yourself in order to stop the climate to keep warming and warming and to stop Africa from being cooked as one of the most vulnerable regions in the world. So what would a good deal look like next week? A good deal? A good deal means what developing countries are asking for. 40 to 50 percent emission reductions by the year 2020. That is what 131 countries are asking for. But now what do we have? Only emission reductions from 13 to 17 percent. That means that even if they say they are going to control the, the increase in the temperature to 2 degrees Celsius, that's not true because what they are going to do, scientists are saying, is going to bring us a world of more than four to six degrees Celsius. So we have, we expect to see a real outcome that saves humanity and Mother Earth, and not a new Copenhagen, not a new Cancun that haven't solved nothing at all. You've been inside the negotiations in the past, you're outside now, and you're following them this week. Do you feel like there's been any movement this week? There's been a movement in maybe some secondary issues, but in the key issue that is emission reductions, deep cuts, no, not at all. How do you feel now being outside the talks instead of inside? I can feel that I'm here with the people that really are going to suffer and that are really struggling to confront climate change. I may say that many of the negotiators there are thinking more on how they are going to be diplomats all their life and they are not really thinking on the consequences of what they are doing. Are the negotiators inside hearing these people out here? I would say yes, but it's not enough. We need to have even a stronger voice and really to show that there is a humanity that's standing to stop global warming and that is asking that there will be deep cuts in the short term, now and not in the future. How do we amplify these voices? We need to use a different kind of, of mechanism. Protests are very good, but from the People's World Conference on Climate Change and Mother Earth Rights came, for example, a proposition to have a referendum, a global referendum on climate change, so that people in their communities, in their cities, in their countries can begin to express what is their position. So we need to develop this other kind of mechanism. There is also the proposal to have a climate justice tribunal to begin from the peoples to really judge who are the responsibles of all of this debt and damage to our environment. So with all these different kind of actions, we need to build a movement that comes together with the Occupy Wall Street movement that comes together with the Indignados movement because we are all fighting against the same system, the same capitalist system of the one percent of the population that is just saying we don't care about the 99 percent when it comes to job but also when it comes to climate. And the climate justice referendum and tribunals, where do they stand now? They are actually a proposal that's being discussed. I think that from Durban we must come out with a concrete 
roadmap of actions, a plan of action, where we say now we're going to have a People's World Conference at a local level, at national level, to begin to say let's have first experience on what a referendum can be, and develop all these actions in a very coordinated way all around the world. Is there going to be a follow-up to the Bolivia uh, World People's Conference? I think that, uh, that it will be, of course, but it will be in a very different way. Not only one big summit in one place, but many summits, many conferences in many different parts of the world. To be with the grassroots, with the people that are suffering in concrete terms the impacts of climate change. When can we expect to see those happening? I think we need to have this during the next year, the first months, because time is running out. There are other kinds of battles. If you don't win them this year, you can win them maybe next year or in five years. But in this case, the, the clock is running against us. If we are not able to change the situation in the coming years, in a very short term, it will be late the next decade. No matter what we do, it will be too late because greenhouse gas emissions will be already so big in the atmosphere and it takes 100 years to take them out of the atmosphere. So we need to act and have these actions during the first months of next year. What's your single message to the negotiators inside? Think on the people, not on business. You're responsible for what can be the biggest genocide and ecocide in the 21st century. Thank you, Pablo.